and welcome back to the hot lap. We are looking at the BTCC Donington first round of the Touring Car, the British Touring Car Championship here in the UK. And what an amazing weekend it was. What an amazing Sunday. But we nearly didn't get a Sunday race at all. It was absolutely chucking it down at the beginning of the Touring Car. And I, I signed in, I think a tiny bit late, just in time for that first race. And I was like, what is going on here? And sadly, no racing absolutely wet but luckily we did get racing and it was none other than tom ingram that starred he was probably the star of the week taking two of the um taking the first two races race one and race two not really given ash sutton too much of a looking for race victories although he did really solid as well but race three it didn't go all tom ingram's way because of obviously that reverse grid it went a certain aiden mofat's way but he started second and it was Rob Huff, returning, BTCC returning, Rob Huff, showing that he still has it. I'm sure if Rob was here, he'd probably poke me, at the least, and say, Jane, I never lost it. So, let's get into the winners then, winners and losers then, of the BTCC, but... Before we do that, let's quick have a risk have a quick rundown of who finished where in the uh, in the races. So here we go, Tom Tom Ingram. He he's he's wins at race one, are followed by Ash Tutton, Jake Hill, Colin Turkington, Ronan Pearson, Josh Cook, Aaron Taylor Smith. Then we've got Adam Morgan in eighth, Dan Camish ninth, Ada Mofat in tenth. That's your top ten for race one. Race two, if we go down, thanks to touringcars.net, we've got, and uh, once again, Tom Ingram, Ash Tartan, Jake Hill, Josh Cook, Colin Turkington, Dan Kamish, Adam Morgan, Ada Mofat, Rob Huff, and Dan Rowbottom. Now, the final race, last but very much, no means least, the most entertaining race, I think, of the weekend. We've got Ada Mofat, Colin Turkington, Ash Tartan, Tom Ingram, Jake Hill, Rob Huff. Yeah, he, fin he started pole, but finished sixth. He was, I tell you what, his not him, but his car was very much a beaten car by the end of that race. Adam Morgan, Dan Rowbottom, Josh Cook, last but no means least, was Dan Cambridge. So let's get into our winners and losers of the touring car first round at Donington. Bear with me. And here we go. We are we're, we're back to our winners and losers room. So let's have a look, shall we? Let's see, first of all, alphabetical order. How did Mr. Adam Morgan do? Well, Adam Morgan, he I tell you what, his qualifying wasn't, I think, it wasn't the strongest from what I remember when we when we look at when we look at race race number one. He ended up finishing though. Adam Morgan, let me see. Uh, race one, he ended up finishing uh Tom Ingram one eighth which wasn't too which, which is, i don't think it was too bad and i think he after that he had a really solid weekend he finished seventh in race two and he finished third in race three i think adam morgan overall had a really solid weekend a really good start to the championship i'm not going to say better than i thought he was because he is racing i think in arguably the second or you know in a top three car let's say but this guy this guy this next guy i think this man here had a much better, I think, I mean, he won. He won. Aidan Mofat won an absolutely a fascinating race. I think his best win so far. So, let's head on into race three. He starts in, what I think is, he starts in second next to Rob, you know, next to Rob Hoff. Gets a better start. And then it's pretty much ding-dong all the way. He has fights with Rob Huff at the start, you know, near near the beginning and ends up fending off Rob Huff after a couple of repasses and then goes on to win his third race. And this is despite pressure from Colin Turkington and Ash Sutton. And they were pressured themselves by a certain Tom Ingram. Um, so in race three, he did a really, really solid job. In the first race, he only finished 10th, which I think is not, not particularly bad. Bearing in mind, he, you know, he qualified sixth, so kind of disappointing. And in the... um. And in the second race, he ended up finishing eighth, which I don't think was too bad. But what a weekend that this guy had. Um, I think other than maybe uh, Tom Ingram, massive. He's going to be the probably the happiest guy leaving leaving Donington, definitely. So onwards and not necessarily upwards to Andrew Watson. How, do, how did old Andy do? Well, race one, I'm just scanning down. He ended up, he, he, he qualified... Uh, what, I think six? So it was a really, really good qualifying, I think, for Andrew Watson. Um, but he ended up 
kind of hitting the reverse button, didn't he? After qualifying sixth in race one, Andrew Watson ended up 11th, which wasn't, you know, great, let's say. And in race two, though, he ended up finishing 12th. Yes. And then in race three, he ended up finishing 12th. So at least this guy's fairly, con you know, he scored scored points, fairly consistent. First round of the weekend, I can, you know, kind of like a thumbs up, sort of in the middle, maybe. Next up, Aaron Taylor Smith. Yes, the uh, smiling Smith, as you can see there. But how did Aaron Taylor Smith do? Well, he qualified seventh, which I think was, you know, fairly solid. And then in the race, consistently, he did finish seventh which i thought was you know a fairly good one and then he finished 11th in race two rounding it up by with a 14th in race number three which once again kind of like andrew watson fairly fairly average you know um you know i don't i don't, I don't think he's going to be ultimately celebrating fantastically with the trophies but i think he'll go home okay i don't think he'll go home too sad but i think still work to do but this guy here so th this is an interesting one does Ash Sutton go home happy or does he go home very much sad? Well, let's see. I mean, he, he on the grid, he was think, he was second on the grid um, in, in race one. And he finished second. Uh, but to be fair, he was... Real, I, th I think Jake Kura, one of the BMWs, did pass him in race one. And I think he now sees that Tom Ingram is taking this championship very, very seriously, as obviously it is Ash Tutton. I've no doubt why he wouldn't take it seriously. So we had a, a race one second, race two second, and in race three, he finished third. So he was the one man to finish on the podium every race this weekend. So I think other than Aidan Moffat and uh, Aidan Moffat, sorry, and Tom Ingram. He's probably the third happiest man. So definitely a thumbs up for Ash Sutton coming out of Don, you know, coming out of uh, Donington. I think he did a solid job, and I believe he still is one of, if not the, championship favourite going into the rest of the season. Really, really solid start. And at some point, all the Napa teams kind of starred in a way. At some uh, at some point, they had they had their moments, but championship favourite I think is still Ash Sutton. So Chris Smiley, but yeah, pun intended. Is he still going to be Smiley at the end? Well, let's have a look. I mean, he he finished fifteenth in the first race after qualifying. Uh, you know, kind of a for, I think for Chris Smiley, disappointing twelfth. So in race two, I'm just looking down the order. He ended up finishing fourteenth, which once again. Um, 12th, 14th, fairly solid, not really for Chris Smiley. I mean, if it was his rookie race, maybe. And then a disappointing, I think, 18th in the, you know, in the uh, in the third race. So I think Chris Smiley is going to go away from this race weekend. Fairly disappointed. Yeah. But will Colin, Tur will Colin Turkington be disappointed? Well, he, st he qualified third on the grid and then he dropped a place um finishing fourth in race one he finished fifth in race two but then second in race three so kind of like a not as successful ash Sutton. i don't think he'll go away too unhappy because that bmw i mean anyone i think in the top four or five potentially could have won a race here in with each race that finished race one was cut short with that super long safety car i believe there was a marshal that um, was on the floor i haven't heard too much about it but i hope he's okay um because there was a you know fairly sizable crash with one of the napa team racing drivers in race one that that put a massive delay for that race so I'm not saying race one didn't count, but it was really, really short. And it's a shame, really, because that was the race where it was very interesting what the track surface was going to do had they had they run the full had they run the full race. But I think Colin Turkington is going to go home fairly happy, but kind of like I'm happy, but we have work to do when we get to round you know round two in Brown's Hatch. So Dan Camish, is this man going to be happy? Well, he didn't qualify too great, did he, In uh, for the first race. It was 17th. I mean, talk about dropping the ball in the qualifying position, but he really made up for it. He ended up qualifying, not qualifying, he ended up finishing ninth in that in in that first race which i think one of the you know one of the one of the stars of that first race and then he ended up finishing 6th in the second race not so good in the final race he finishing finishing 10th but the fact that he did start so far on the you know um 
so far away on that grid. Uh, what was it? Seventh, seventeenth. I mean, oh my gosh! I think he did quite good in the end. I mean, he's got to be after qualifying. I think he's got to be fairly happy with the way his weekend panned out. I still want him, and I still think he has the ability to put Sutton under pressure. I think Sutton may have his number, but I think the one driver I feel in the Napa Racing team is still Dan Camish. He is the man that can put them under pressure. So. Naughty point. I think Dan wrote Daniel Robarton. Yeah, he ended up, he ended up punting off Rob Huff, and I think and I think someone else in in I believe it was race one, which was you know not particularly great, was it? So Dan Robarton, how did he do? Well, he qualified pretty much fourteenth. He finished almost dead last after that race one. I think you know he had a bit of damage there, so to speak, which didn't set him up very good for race two, but kind of like his teammate Dan Couch, he ended up finishing a really good 10th in race two, which I thought was, you know, fairly, fairly solid for that race two. And in race three, he ended up gaining, you know, gaining bettering, sorry, the last one by finishing eighth. So I think a thumbs kind of in the middle because of that faux pas on that, on that first, on that first race, but eh, not too, but not, not too bad. So Daryl Deleon, Daryl Dillion, I'm so sorry, Daryl, if I've got your if I've got your name wrong. This guy, um, I, I was disappointed in the way for qualified. Kind of wanted more because I kind of think he yeah, could have done a lot better. I mean, he qualified, he qualified ninth, didn't he? And he finished only fourteenth, and then raced to fifteenth, and then he went out. So I think fairly solid, but I can't help but thinking. I wanted more from this guy's first race weekend of the year in tw in 2024. Fingers crossed. Let's see what we can do when we go when we go after Browns. Next up, we have Jake Hill. So, how did this man do? Well, he finished on the podium in the first race after starting fourth. Once again, finished on the podium. I mean, it was a copy and paste, wasn't it? I'm just double checking because it, it definitely was the first two races: Tom Ingram, Ash Sutton, Jake Hill, and then Tom Ingram, Ash Sutton, Jake Hill. Although they were very different races, but fair play to Jake Hill, and uh, he ended up finishing fifth uh, for the uh, for the final race. So, um, for me. Kind of like Ash Sutton. I think Jake Hill could not have got off to a better start. Massive thumbs up for Jake Hill in relation to his first touring car weekend of the 2024 season. And this guy here, yep, uh, Josh Cook. So he, he, he looks quite cross in his photo, doesn't he? Was he cross though with the race results? Well, let's have a look. No. Third, as we said. Third for race one and race two. And then fifth for race three. Showing kind of like, you know, that... This guy, Jake Hill, is he a championship contender for 2024? If he puts on performances like that, race weekends like that, I mean, he qualified fourth for the first race. I think he, you know, you maybe will start to have to talk to him, talk about him being a genuine contender for the 2024 season. Absolute Josh Cook. Uh, no, I'm talking, yeah. Uh, um, I'm Jake Hill, sorry, the championship contender. Josh Cook. I was talking about the wrong one. Please, I do apologise. I'm just completely rambling. Um, so Josh Cook, yeah. So he qualified eighth, finishing sixth for that first race. He ended up finishing fourth for that second race. And he ended up um, finishing ninth for the third race. So my apologies. Josh Cook, championship pretender. I think he needs to go a bit a bit more some to become one. It was... Um, I'm so sorry. It was this guy here, Jake Hill, uh, that, saying that I think he could. He may well be a championship contender. But let's... I digress. Let's get on to Mikey Dobble. How did how did Mikey do? Well, he did. I mean, he qualified tenth, but then finished thirteenth. Yes, <laughs> this is like, is he the most unluckiest man in Donington? Because race one was thirteenth, race two was thirteenth, and race three was thirteenth. Maybe on a plus point, Mikey. At least at least you're consistent. Next up, Nick Halstead. How you know was he quick, Nick, at the weekend? Or was he not so quick, Nick? Well, he ended up qualifying a disappointing 19th, but he did finish 16th in the race. He was consistent. He finished 16th again. And then fairly consistent by finishing 17th. So kind of a meh weekend for, for Nick. Hopefully, he will live up to the nickname we've given him. Quick Nick, coming, coming into Brown's Hatch. Rob Huff, this guy here, I mean, he came, he came into it. People were really, really excited to see him. And his qualifying, qualifying 20th, was not great. I was really, really quite disappointed, if I'm honest. Um, but for the first race, he was, you know, he was really, really doing some excellent passes. A really solid first race until that incident, I think, with Robottom um, punting him and, and another car 
ended up uh, not doing too well, really, let's be honest. But really, really solid stuff, I thought, from Rob Huff. And he ended up finishing, what, um, ninth in race two and sixth in race three, albeit he did lead it. And he looked genuinely, I think, despite the fact that I, his car might be slightly on the slower, for, on the slower front in his, in his Toyota. I mean, that's what also the commentators were saying. I think he did. He was one of... Uh, one of the drivers, I think, that did a really, really solid job. And coming out of it, I'm not, I don't want to say he's one of the underrated drivers, but I think his performance was really, really solid. And I think, seeing what we saw in Donington, given another reverse grid chance, say, for example, at a track like Brands Hatch, I think he could most certainly win, win, win a race this year. I was really, to be fair, I was really gunning for him. I was really cheering for him in that, in that race. Three, and he kind of just got bullied and bullied and bullied, didn't he? off the track shortly after Aidan Moffat passed him, which was, which for me was a bit of a shame. But really, really, a really, really solid start. So next up, um, nope, it's not you, Jake Hill. You can, you can, you can go away. It is um, Ronan Pearson. So how did this guy do? So Ronan Pearson, he ended up qualifying a, uh, let me see, a solid fifth, but then he finished fifth in that first race. He ended up finishing... Well, not so good. Yes, a lowly 17th in race two and a very lowly. I think he um, didn't finish race three at all, did he? Let's just have a let's just have a double check here. So in race three, Ronan Pearson ended up, I think it was a DNF, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ronan Pearson, race three, Chris Smiley, Ronan Pearson and Dow DeLeon ended up um, DNFing, which was a massive shame. Um, but a really, really solid first race. And it just kind of went downhill from there, really. Um, yeah. So next up, we have a certain Sam Osborne. How did Sam Osborne do? Well, he qualified, let me see, and he finished. Didn't do too well in that race because he was the one that brought the safety car out. Um, I mean, it was a massive smack into the tyres in race one shortly after. And then the safety car out seemed to be out for ages. He didn't, I think he didn't even start race two. It was a DNS, wasn't it? Because I think, I believe, they were still trying to fix his car. Yeah, did not start. So finishing last then. But he did get going finally in race three and finishing 16th. So I don't, it wasn't his fault he got into the barriers. He got hit. So I don't think we can really judge him at all. So we're going to have to wait, I feel, until... Um, until we get to Brown's Hatch to see to see to see what this guy is really made of, but we can have we can have a chat about Scott Sumpton, can't we? So he qualified fifteenth, uh, finishing race one in seventeenth, fairly solid-ish, I guess. And then he ended up Scott Sumpton. Where did he finish in race two? It was oh, oh sadly eighteenth, and then another six uh, sixteenth. So it was consistent, but in the late teens, yeah. And what is it? He's, he's got he's got the coupe on. I guess it's not the best car. Could he? I mean, as we know, anything can happen in BTCC. He may well spring a surprise. I think it would it would be awesome if he could get a, um, if he could get some kind of a podium or something this season. I think that would be brilliant, uh, for Scott. So, Tom Ingram. Nope, it's Tom Chilton first. First, first of them. So Tom Chilton. He ended up qualifying. Where did? Tom Chilton qualified. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look down. I'm trying to look down the list. You can probably see me look down the list. He qualified 13th. Unlucky for some. Finished 12th in race one, and he ended up uh, finishing. Where did he? Where did he finish in race two? I can't even see his name. No, yeah, that's why. Because he finished all the way at the back in race two, which I think was a yeah. He was the first DNF because Sam Asborn didn't start. So not. I mean, and a. Was it eleventh uh, in race three? So which was quite solid. Bear in mind he started pretty much at the back, you know, near the back. And I think, bear in mind he had so many technical issues this weekend. I think it's kind of like a reset for him in two weeks' time in in Brands Hatch. He's a lot better than his results. We know we we know that, and I feel. He's kind of got to get out of jail car this time because the car really, really let him down. So last but not least is Mr. Tom Ingram. I so love his face this. It's brilliant. Um, I mean, this guy, absolutely amazing weekend. He said himself, I don't think I could have got off to a better start. Winning the first two races and then getting on the podium for that, you know, for the uh, five, for the five, no, uh, getting just missing the story of the podium for that final race in fourth. And has he sent a message to Ash Sutton or what? So absolutely, absolutely brilliant stuff from Tom Ingram. So the winner, I think, overall, because he got the points of the weekend, absolutely, was Tom Ingram. The, the Yeah, 
I mean, what a start. What a star for the weekend. But other, I mean, other winners. I'm going to go with Aidan Moffat as well. But this guy here, Rob Huff, on returning, he he's the one man that made me shout at the TV the most. Um, upon upon watching upon watching his race, fantastic, really really good stuff there from from Rob Huff. So I mean, we don't have two because everything was so late. We don't have too many um, uh, interviews and stuff. So Tom Ingram has said on the Twitter, uh, has he said anything about his race weekend? A good, he said a good battle to the line. I know he's been quite happy, as he said, uh, back to back wins, race two result, and winner winner chicken dinner. Um, that's that's me, P Poly. Look at that. I think he, I, I mean, I think he did a fairly solid job there. He's obviously, you know, Pete, really, 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 really happy there. Um, so let's have a look at Colin Turkington quickly. Yeah, he's, uh, he's about short safety car interrupted, but sweet race one, P4. It became greasy quite quickly, and we struggled a bit compared to the and they did. To be fair, the BMWs, despite getting off that line really, really well, they did really, yeah, they did really struggle, didn't they, towards the uh. To, uh, for the, it was getting their tyres up to temperature was the big struggle for the BMWs on on that half, halfway around the, the first lap and the second lap. So so it kind of negated any potentially good start they had. Um, Brands Hatch I think may well be a bit different for them. Uh, you know they've done okay at Brands Hatch before, but he said but a great start to get the day underway. Slicks for race two. Then he's not really commented too much there. So there will be some kind of fallout from the BTC. We'll have another video this week about all the news coming out of the BTCC but a massive congratulations to ITV I thought uh, at one point we weren't even going to get a race I thought at one point no it's not even happening so I'm so happy that we ended up having a really really solid BTCC um round one two and three at Donington yeah I think we're returning here as well on a mixed on, on quite a mixed day they did show, I remember, the 2023 race where I think Nick Hamilton did really well, didn't he? And that's the race where Lewis Hamilton was secretly was secretly watching his brother, which I thought was really nice. But anyway, I digress. This has been the this has been the hot lap. If you like what you see, please give us a subscribe. That would be absolutely amazing. And we'll speak to you soon. Stay tuned for more BTCC news coming over the week. The fallout from the first few rounds first few i was gonna say three but no there yeah the first three rounds of the donnington of donnington of the british touring car championship well done tom ingram